today we are going to talk about lenses. Hang on. Hi, my name is Urban Anjar and this is Photography 101. And today we are going to discuss lenses. The lens is the piece of glass that's shaping your images. And there are different kinds of lenses, much to choose among. And there are some numbers on the front of the lens. The first one is often the focal length of the lens. I will explain what that is. But the smaller number, the wider the lens is. And the greater number, the narrower it will be. The next number tells about the aperture, how much light the lens lets in. And it's a little bit counterintuitive because the smaller number, the more light you get in. Sometimes there are two numbers for the focal length and that's on a zoom lens. Uh, and some lenses, often the better ones, have a constant number for the aperture. Some other zoom lenses, you see the two different focal lengths. Some of them have a variable opening. And in this case, it's a so-called kit lens. You may have played with the focal length length of a simple lens, a magnifier or something, collecting the light to one point to get something begin to burn or at least getting hot and black and uh, smoking. Nowadays focal lengths are often measured in millimeter. On some vintage lenses you will probably see centimeters instead. And the focal length is often marked with the letter F. Don't confuse it with that F over something. Then it's the aperture. And it's the relation between aperture and focal length that makes the aperture number. You could measure aperture in millimeters, but that will be troublesome to compare different uh, measurements. So it's smarter to use that proportion. And we have different kinds of lenses. Some lenses are wide angle lenses. This is a 23 millimeter. They show more of the subject, show the content, good for storytelling. And they all also have greater depth of field. You can create blurry backgrounds with wide angle lens lenses too, but not so much blur. They are also useful for narrow location and at least the not so extreme wide angle lenses are useful also for environmental portraits, reportage and so on. And also naturally for landscape and street photography. A trick with wide angle lenses is getting closer to the subject. Then you have telephoto lenses. This is a 50 millimeter and on APC that I use, it's a telephoto lens, a short telephoto lens. You may be more used to see the longer ones, often a zoom lens that is really big. When do you use a telephoto lens? Yeah, well, sometimes you cannot get close enough to your subject. There's also shorter depth of field, so you have easier to isolate the subject. And you, can, you also compress the perspective with telephoto lens. Short telephoto lenses are also good for portraiture. In the between telephoto lenses and wide angle lenses, you have normal or standard lenses. They are often fairly cheap, often small and lightweight, and often fast. And I'll get back to what a fast lens is. Some people say they are 
the universal lens. Also, always use that normal or standard lens. I will say they are a little bit boring. I seldom use them. Uh, some people say that they are like the human eye sees things. Well, that's not my eye. I can see things in a very extreme wide angle and also zoom in some detail that is interesting to me. So my eye are more variable than that, but maybe there is some truth about that too. I don't know. Well, what focal length are that normal or standard? Well, on micro four thirds, it's 25 mil, around 25 mil millimeters. On APS-C, it's around 35 millimeters. And on full frame, it's about 50 millimeters. Well, what's a fast lens then? Fast lens is a lens that lets in much light. Also gives more background blur. Shorter if you use those big apertures or small aperture numbers. A fast lens has a maximal aperture of 2, 1.4, 1.2, 0.95. Fast lenses are often larger, they are more expensive and they are heavier. But of course, sometimes they are very useful. Then we have zoom lenses and they are characterized of a variable focal length and they are seldom faster than 2.8 and they are larger, more expensive, heavier, it needs much more glass to make a zoom lens and they make you a little bit lazy. You maybe forget to use your feet when you're shooting, instead you zoom in or zoom out but they are practical. They substitute many other lenses and many photographers can be okay with just one lens. And that's a good thing. Then we have a kit lens and they are often dirt cheap when you buy them together with a camera body. And you get started with that lens. I also have met people who have made really successful pictures with rather simple camera bodies and a kit lens, but they are seldom faster than 3.5 and they are even slower at longer focal length and many of them have cheap plastic mounts that easily break and they may not be that sharp, at least not wide open. If you believe that my camera isn't too good, my pictures doesn't get that good, it might be that kit lens that holds you back. So try to get something better in if you feel that you are held back while by your kit. Okay, now I'll, I'm going to try to compare different lenses in the more traditional way. We begin with a mobile photo because most of you have tried shooting with a mobile phone. And then I, from the same place, use different lenses. And this is a 16 millimeter wide angle lens on APS-C body. If you're shooting full frame, it's about 24 millimeters. This is 140 millimeters telephoto lens from the same position and that's about 200 millimeters on full frame. This is 35. That's a normal or standard lens and if you're shooting full frame it's 50 millimeters. Here's also a wide angle lens, 18 millimeters, about 28 on full frame. And this is 23, moderate wide, wide angle, comparable with 35 on full frame. 
and this is 50 millimeters a short telephoto lens. That's about 75 millimeters on full frame. Well, in practice, you don't use all those lenses from the same position. You, you will use your feet, move around and make the pictures with that. So this is 140 millimeters. And this is 16 millimeters. And you see that 140 millimeters with full opening totally obliterates what is in the background. But the wide angle lens, well, it isn't tack sharp out in the kitchen, but still you can see that it is a kitchen. Um, you see more stuff in the picture, for better or for worse. Here's 140 millimeters again, but stopped down. It still blows away most of the background, but at least you get some bokeh balls from the glasses in the background. And here is 16 millimeters wide open. And it blows away a little bit more about the background, but still you can guess about what's there. And here's 35 with full, full opening and it blows away most of the background, but still you can see some details in the background. Here is 35 a little bit closer and now it obliterates the most of the background. Here is 50 millimeters stopped down to 8. And here is 50 millimeters with almost full opening and it concentrates your view a little bit more on the main subject. Here's a 23, a little bit close up and it blows away much of the background. And here is about the same picture, a little bit away from the subject. For everyday photo, I often use the 23 and maybe the 50 and not so much more. Sometimes I carry around a wider lens too, but I seldom use it. But some days I take out that telephoto lens and here I've used that lens for some pictures. Often in pretty bad light, but it is it's a stabilized lens and that's really good. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see and see you in the next one. Bye.